Morning friends. Happy Saturday. I know this video will come out probably on Sunday or Monday, but today is Saturday for me, and today is the process of starting to take this bike apart. I've had a few requests for different parts and pieces, so I'm going to start disassembly on this project and bring you guys along. One of the big things I need to take off is this fairing. Obviously I know that this fairing does not belong on this motorcycle, and I've got a couple people that are interested in it, so I'm going to start taking that off today. Then I'm going to attempt to get the seat off, the saddlebag, and we'll kind of go from there. I'm going to pri primarily focus on this side of the bike. Uh, I would like to get the floorboard off, the shift linkage, the outer primary, and then kind of see where I'm at on time and try to get as much disassembled as I can today and try to get those, those parts moved. So we'll start by taking the fairing off first. Brought all my tools with me today. Got everything laid out that I think that I'll need. I know my straps are right in the way. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with this camera, but it's giving me all sorts of fits. The video I did the other day had zero sound on it, so I'm not sure if the memory cards are dying, I'm not sure if the camera's dying. I know that I'm running through batteries like crazy, so I know that the batteries are not in good shape. This camera is, to me, only a year old. It is a GoPro Hero 8. I've used it for all of the videos so far, except for the ones I've done on my cell phone. So I guess I'm not sure what the usage is on these things or how much you should be able to use them or not use them. I'm also running the media pack on this, so I have the screen and the extra microphone. So I'm not sure if that's an issue, if there's some sort of software update that I need to do or something going on, but I just lost video a second ago. So I'm not sure what was even recorded at this point. I don't have time to go ahead and look, so I'm gonna get back to tearing this bike apart. As I said, I'm taking the fairing off first. One of the fun things I notice is it's got half inch bolts on the bottom and it has screws on the top portion here. So this should be fun to try to get apart. Hopefully, I can get this to work right. The screws are super chewed up. But this one is coming out, thankfully. exactly how long it is, but it's definitely going to take the ratchet, I think, to get it all the way out. Move on to the other side, get that one to loosen up as well. Thankfully there was enough room to get this one out. This one's still kind of stuck in there. Put the screw aside, we'll go back to working on those bolts.
I've got the two bolts out. Go ahead and try to finish getting that screw out of place. And hopefully, this will back out all the way. There we are. Now the fairing should be able to be pulled off. Of course, there's always one zip tie. There's always one that you don't see. And there's actually one on this bracket here that's holding the clutch cable in place. So we're gonna cut that. If I can find a good way to get to it. Clutch cable is mounted between the fairing and the bracket. So I need to get this bracket to stay out of the way to get the clutch cable removed. Definitely don't make these brackets easy to get to.
I think I've made enough room here between the bracket and the fairing itself to be able to pull this up and over the clutch cable here. fairing removed, I think I'm going to start working on this dash here and pull this apart. I should be able to remove this easy enough since I've got all of the, most of the hardware off. I do have these two screws here, so I'll go ahead and remove those next. that out of the way we've got a dash removed. And I'm not sure if you guys can see in there but obviously there's no odometer or trip meter or anything so at some point in time somebody's gutted this thing I'm not exactly sure why but that was one of the biggest issues I had with the bike is that you couldn't tell what the mileage was it didn't have anything on it at all I don't assume the mileage is very high on this bike um, but again I don't know where it came from you know originally who owned it or anything like that I do have a title, so I guess I could do a title search and see how many owners there have been. But it is a fairly clean bike from what I'm seeing. I just don't understand why somebody would take the speedometer apart. You know, weirder things, I've seen all kinds of crazy things in my time, and this is one of them. Assembling the wiring in this nacelle here, getting the housings ready to be removed. We'll try to keep some of the wiring together. Even inside of here, it's really clean. I mean, there's some obviously there's some dust in here, and you can tell it's been sitting for a little while, but it's not. It's not overly dirty, the, the wires are nice and bright, you can tell they haven't been you know, chewed on by animals, nothing that I've seen so far. It doesn't look like anybody's hands have been in here to you know, cut or splice any of the wiring to do anything for accessory lighting or repair down the roll or what have you. Everything appears to be factory so far.
With that, my two control boxes are ready to be removed. Now I'm going to move down onto the bike. I'm going to start working on the left side assembly. We're going to start with that rear saddlebag first. I want to get the saddlebag off and kind of see what I'm working with. Pretty sure that's factory wiring too. That got unclipped fairly nicely. I mean, obviously, it probably hasn't been unclipped in a long time, so it took a little bit of a fight to get it undone, but once I had it off, it was super nice. Unfortunately, I do not have this bag lid. This bag lid was missing when I bought the bike. Kind of a common thing with these tabs and these latches, these bag lids didn't stay on all the time and would fly off or get lost or damaged. One of the really neat parts about these old bikes was, was the oil bath chain system. The chain is completely enclosed the whole way, so it's not supposed to splash oil on the rear tires, and it's supposed to continually keep the chain in the oil, keeping it oiled, keeping it lubricated, and hopefully keeping it good. I've seen a few of these. Um, I think it's a neat setup, honestly. What's cool to me about it is you can't see it. You know, when the bag has its, or the bike has its bags on, excuse me, um, you can't tell that it's on there. You know that this has the system going so it's kind of a neat system for sure um, i've seen it like i said on a few of these older bikes i know that i'm pretty sure that this was the first year they did this was in 1980 and they did it for a few years and of course did away with it from here i'd like to try to remove the seat so that way i have the seat off and then i think we'll take the side cover off and then we'll start working on outer primary stuff so we'll start here with the seat bolt and see see if we can get that off So working on the seat here, we'll go ahead and unbolt it from the bottom side. There are two bolts, one on each side to this seat, this side, that side, and then there should be a seat post up front here, and we'll go ahead and get that removed, slid off is what I should say. Unfortunately, the tour pack was missing on this bike, and of course they cut the wire when they removed that. So that part's missing, sadly. I do have wiring here to plug into, and I'm not sure what that's for. That may be for tour pack two. Maybe this had a CB on it. I'm not really sure. I know some of these bikes did have CBs back in the day. Maybe part of the reason why they removed the, the dash. I, I really don't know. So we'll go to the other side and we'll get this off. seat has your two front tabs and of course your mounting holes in the bottom here. Sadly with these types of seats the plastic always breaks in the front here and you can see it's it's damaged. It's damaged on the side too. And that's kind of a common thing with this type of seat. Looking further into it this bike has been in an accident. One of the things that I did not see was the damage to this rear fender that was underneath this seat. I'm not exactly sure what happened here but I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. As you can see, there's a nice big dent right here, and another little one here. So something fell on this at some point. I don't know if it happened with the seat on or off, but I would assume that this was this happened with all of these parts off because it hit here and none of this is damaged. And I don't see the saddlebag being damaged. So this bike must have been a part at one point in time when this fender got smashed. And obviously it got hit pretty darn good because that's a heck of a dent. Not sure how you even do that one. From there, we'll go ahead and we'll remove this side cover. And then once we have the side cover off, we're gonna start working our way forward on the lower parts here.
This left side cover is held on with one bolt, and then from there it has two clips on the top. And you can see the clip holes here. There are two frame clips. It slides down and then bolts in place. From there we'll move forward. We're going to go ahead and pull this, this rear peg off first, and then we're going to open up this derby cover and take a look inside. One rear peg removed. Also one of the unique features on this bike is, on later models, this became the battery box. In the early 80s through 92, I believe, the oil bag was on the right-hand side and was accessible from this side. The battery was also behind that, leaving this cavity open. So often they would put the horn on the inside, so the horn was actually underneath your seat. You know, I'm not sure if they increased the decibel level of these horns to make them louder so you could hear them or not. Um, I know that the horns on stock Harleys are not that loud, so I'm hoping that these are fairly loud. I guess I didn't beat the horn on this one to hear it. I do assume that it's a fairly loud one, and I could turn it on to figure that out. From there, we'll go ahead and we'll look inside this derby cover. This bike, of course, has the highly sought after 80 cubic inch finned derby cover. I do like those, they're a nice piece. Unfortunately, the drain plug is so chewed up, there's no way to actually get it out for me on the bike. So I'm gonna have to remove the outer primary cover to be able to drain the fluid. I know that makes a little bit of a mess, but I do have my big catch pan on the bottom here. So I'm gonna leave that on for now. Like any good Harley project, you always run into bolts and nuts that have been changed. This rear section does not have a nut on it at all, and of course is just spinning freely. The front section has a bolt that's a 3 8 and a nut that's metric. <laughs> I'm thinking it's 10 millimeter. So I'll have to go ahead and find a 10 millimeter wrench to get this pulled off. And then once we have that pulled off, I'll probably actually just pull the bracket here for the rear section. Once I have that bracket pulled, I should be able to pull this floorboard off and then we'll get the next steps going.
It's amazing what a little bit of rust will do and hold these things right in place. And those things fought me the entire way. But anyway, I've got both of them out now, so I should be able to pull this floorboard. There's one floorboard removed. Now with that removed, I should be able to remove the floorboard mount. Let me use a little power to remove this floorboard mount. Should help me out a little bit. Now the floorboard mount's removed. With that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and attempt to pull this kickstand out of the way. I think I can get it while it's on the bike here without any issues, I hope. Let's give it a shot. As I suspected, there are actual bolts on the other side of these nuts that are gonna free spin, so I don't have a good way to get those off for now. I can't get a wrench in there, there's too much in the way. So I think the kickstand will probably end up coming off last. I may just remove the top nut here and pull the kickstand itself off and leave the bracket in place. But for now, we're gonna work on getting this shift linkage out of the way. Okay, now we're working on getting this shift linkage removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and unloosen this stud here. Should be able to pull the linkage off itself. Of course, we're fighting, you know, 45 years worth of grime on the end of this shaft. It's coming, but it's a slow process. Now I've got the linkage out of the way, which is nice to have removed. From there, I can go ahead and start disassembling this outer primary cover. I'm going to loosen up all these studs here. I know the oil is going to start draining out kind of everywhere, unfortunately. I don't have a good way to do it because I don't have access to that drain plug. That drain plug head is just stripped, and unfortunately it's going to have to be drilled out, and I'm not going to try to do that on the bike.
Another neat feature to this bike is actually the shift linkage apparatus that gets it the linkage to you know the heel toe shifter here and this is its own cast piece and I don't think they did this for a whole lot of years I think they did it for a couple years in the early 80s just on these types of bikes so kind of a neat piece that you don't see very often That's the entire apparatus right there that gets the heel toe shifter you know, to your foot, spacing it away from the front of the primary here. So it's actually not going through the primary or attached to it in any way, shape, or form. I know they changed this mounting system quite a few times between you know, the 70s and the current models. Just kind of a neat piece that, like I said, you don't see a whole lot out there. We'll go ahead and set that one aside. We'll try to keep all these pieces together. I'd like to sell that whole apparatus as one good piece. From there, I'm going to pull the rest of these outer primary cover screws out. So I can start getting this primary cover off. Again, I realize this is going to leak and it's going to make a bit of a mess, but I don't have another option. That should be the last stud, so I should be able to pull this cover off now. I'm sure it's going to, well, maybe it's not going to fight me too bad. Try to guide this oil out as good as possible here without making a giant mess. Right, and with that, we've got one outer primary cover removed. It's always neat to get inside these old bikes and kind of, you know, take a look at them and see what, you know, you might run into. Obviously, the exterior of this bike looks pretty disgusting, but getting into this inner primary here, this looks all factory. I mean, it still has the factory wire tie on there. I mean, I can't believe that someone would have replaced that to the same quality as this is this is installed. And the, the chain looks like it's in good shape. The the clutch basket looks nice. I really don't think this has been into before. I could be totally wrong. I mean, I don't know what this 
what life this has seen, but from the looks of it, it looks like it's in really good shape. One of the last things I want to remove today are the front brakes. The calipers are a different model. These actually are a larger version of the FX style, XL style front calipers. They ran these, I believe, from 80 to 84. I could be wrong on that, honestly, but I think it was 80 to 84 or 80 to 82. I know there was a crossover year, but these are a larger caliper. I know these are kind of highly sought after obviously these are usually not in really good shape. I know that these work. This bike actually works really well as far as stopping power. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those real quick so I can get those listed today and we'll just show you that process. It's super simple. It's kind of quick and easy so we'll run you through that real fast. Calipers are typically easy to remove so they take one simple, this is a quarter inch hex head. Um, hopefully these aren't rusting in place too bad. I am going to use power. I know it's usually a bad idea. Hopefully I don't ruin it here, but we're going to give it a shot. As you can see, these calipers on the FLTs are pretty good size. Um, this one, you know, the pins were pretty rusty, so unfortunately it did take a little bit of effort to get it apart. I'll have to lube these up in order to be able to put them back in the caliper itself and then get it for sale. Um, now that I have it this far, this far, I can take it apart the rest of the way and actually inspect it fully to see that, you know, it's in pretty good shape. It does look like it's in need of a good cleaning, but it looks like it's a nice caliper overall. Well, this is gonna be quite the project for sure. This bike's gonna fight me a little bit, and I know it. You know, it's an older machine. It sat for a long time. I don't know that it's had the best life ever. Uh, I don't know that it's been maintained real well. I think it's done more sitting than being on the road, and a lot of times that doesn't help anything. You know, the sitting, especially in a bad spot, if it's in a barn or in a shed or outside, I mean, geez, I've seen I don't know how many bikes just sitting outside, you know, in the weeds or wherever, and no one cares about them. You know, that doesn't help them to come apart or be maintained or anything. So you're gonna run into issues. The brake line didn't wanna come off, so I'll have to go ahead and address that. You know, that way I can get that, the end out. And that way I can get these up for sale, but that's for another day. Anyway, guys, you know, I appreciate you guys following along. I know this video was kind of all over the place. I didn't have a clear cut plan on how I was gonna take this bike apart or what I was going to do. Normally I try to work from the top down, but I've got a couple of requests for a few parts, so I wanted to get those done. You know, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. You know, I looked at my analytics again yesterday, and it shows that 90% of my viewers are not subscribed at all. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to you know, subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends, share the videos. Of course, stay tuned for the next installment of taking this bike apart. You know, Again, we're going to park this whole thing out here and I'm going to get this thing stripped right down to nothing. So if you want to see that process and watch, you know, this bike come apart, follow along. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys sticking to the end of the video. Take care. We'll see you next time.